so hi everybody and welcome to another amazing sumo meeting uh, on this beautiful monday here in berlin all gloomy and rainy and cold um so we'll just get right in because i think we have quite a lot of things to discuss um there are no previous previous action items that's good um so let's just go to sumo dev who wants to do sumo dev um either way but uh, yeah, I can take it. <laughs> oh, I, I haven't seen what you wrote, but I'll just say that um, we're we're finishing up uh, polishing the persona stuff and and finishing the open badges work. Uh, we'll be working on automated badges next. Uh, but uh, Kadir, you can. All right. Uh, yeah, just just uh, expanding a little bit on that uh, persona, as uh, Ricky said, we're working on that. I know last week I said that we we would be testing it uh, last week, but something uh, came up like um, the one UX issue that we, we that we ran into. We actually figured out how to fix it, so we wanted to fix it before we asked contributors to um, uh, test it. Uh, so that's what we are going to do this Thursday. Uh, this Thursday, we will have uh, everything in line, and then uh, we will ask uh, contributors, and I'm going to post a message about that. About that. We will yeah. ask contributors to uh, test it on Thursday, and hopefully, if the feedback is good, we will be able to switch it on on Friday. Um, and we are we can do that because the code um, is already pushed; it's behind the flag. So all we have to do is. Um, like flip the switch, so to say. Um, fingers crossed, but we're almost there now. It, this is really exciting. Yay. Yeah, and on the, on the personas part, we will see screenshots about how it's going to look on our side uh, later this week, hopefully very soon. Um, and uh, yeah, as, as Ricky already said, he's working on the automation of, um, of the badges already. Uh, so hopefully this is also something that we will uh, see implemented. Uh, I think we said next week, um, so we sh should be good with that. Then, uh, then uh, one heads up: uh, the uh, Sumo, Sumo Dev team is taking uh, one week off for a work week at the end of this quarter. So the next uh, sprint is going to be a shorter one uh, with fewer items on it. Um, but if you have something specific that you would like to see uh, implemented, let me know, and we can uh, try to squeeze it in. All right. So that's it from Sumodev. Nothing else? No. All right. So people, if you have questions, let me know. <laughs> if you have questions, let Kadir know. If you have anything that you want to be done ASAP, let Kadir know. Um, and otherwise, if you have anything else, let Kadir know. Kadir is the POC today. Um, all right, uh, if there are no more questions for Sumoda, we can move on. Anything about UX? So the UX one was, I think, mostly about the persona. Uh, we are getting the uh, UX feedback there from the persona team, uh, but since Bram is, has been uh, traveling and is now on vacation, we don't actually have anything from it. Kadir, was this the thing about being taken to the Persona website instead of Sumo yes. when you click the registration? And we are, yeah, and we are removing that step. That's awesome. I'm very excited about that. So that's great because then people will click in the email, and they will land directly in Sumo again, and they will be logged in at that point, which we didn't have before. So this is really cool. It's really cool. All right, cool, thanks. Um, any questions for this? All right, let's move on to round table. So we have a first question here. Uh, can we do the meeting on Air Mozilla so it's live streamed? This would be good for Sumo. We do the QA desktop and the mobile meeting there once a month. So I don't know the technical part of this. Can we actually do it? I, I, I think I think that Michelle Michelle you're on the line right the mobile team has been doing it for a couple of times right Michelle? yeah we have done um, three meetings on air Mozilla 
And do you have like a more more coverage from those meetings? Do you think that it makes a because I, I know it's a little like it's we should you know we should have to get it all started and you know we've already been posting these videos mm -hmm. online so I think that we're very open uh, with our meetings. So do, Michelle, do you think that it makes a difference uh, to switch to um, Air Mozilla or you know we can just keep on posting those um, video meetings? I'm not sure yet if it makes a difference. I mean, I do think it gets it to a little bit different audience. Um, and it seemed that last week, Yusuf just uploaded one of our videos to the Air Mozilla site, to our channel. So it might be that easy to do it. If it's that easy to do, then it's probably worth it. So I, I talked in an email with somebody from Air Mozilla, and that was a feature that they were that they were working on, but maybe it wasn't coming too soon, which was the ability to say, well, one was the ability to upload videos to Air Mozilla, um, and then a follow-on or later feature, which I said would be even even better than the original one, would just be to like point to a YouTube video and that it would suck it into Air Mozilla or something. Um, but I think this is about doing the actual live streaming on Air Mozilla, right? I think that's what that's what Satdav was asking me about uh, the other day. I don't know how it works, though. Oh, right. So people can participate um, via the live stream. That's right. You're I mean, right. That's the difference. We're uh, live streaming right now. We're just not live streaming on Air Mozilla. you using video? Yeah. Oh, okay. which is the same thing. It would be the same thing. It would, <laughs> it would be it's telling people to go to Air Mozilla instead of this funky URL that we have. Yeah, exactly. And you don't have to involve the Air Mozilla guys. I, which there's, there's certainly a tax for them to do it, right? Oh, okay. So. Yeah, I didn't know that. That's what I guess that was part of the question, right? Is I don't know how it works. Is it a big deal for them to do it? Well, you know, you have to schedule it with them and file a bug, and then they have to, you know, sort of be there to, to do, do it for the hour. Got you. Okay, so it is possible to do it, but does it actually make sense? I mean, is it beneficial? I'm just trying to figure out right. if... What the, what the benefit is? It seems, seems like the benefit would be people who follow Air Mozilla, who would not normally come to the Sumo meeting, would, would be exposed to the Sumo meeting because they watch things on Air Mozilla. Do, we, that, get how many, do we get how many views people are doing on Air Mozilla? I don't know. Um, yeah, we uh, we have got some of that. It's not a ton, you know. I don't know, but but that'd be interesting, Michael. If you can, you know the views for the YouTube videos. Yeah, the YouTube you know, videos over time. I mean, our like our weekly meetings generally get. I don't know, a couple dozen, two, three dozen views. Oh, well, so on Air Mozilla, the mobile meetings are getting like 100 or something. So it might be worth it. Okay, then we can, we can try doing it. And then we see the number of views that we're getting and if it actually makes sense. We'll put it there, yeah. yeah. And then, yeah. you know, for the contact, Michelle, who, who have been helping you? Uh, Sat has been setting them up. Okay, so we can ask him. Yep. Cool, thank you. Just really quick, um, the one thing with uh, Air Mozilla is that it's kind of more of a one-way um, meeting channel, um, so it doesn't really uh, um, encourage active participation from people watching it. Um, I wonder if there's maybe a better way, if we want to get like more contributors involved in this meeting, that we can open up this meeting here on video. I know it's not always the best method, but then at least we can have a two-way street conversation if contributors want to join. It, um, it's maybe expanding. 
Go ahead. It, to it totally is open. There's a there's a link. You can download the software and join the client, and you can just join in, or you can call in over Skype. Um, yeah, no. All, all, all I'm meaning is if if what we're trying to get is more participation in this meeting, maybe we should try to publicize this meeting more um, over video instead of Air Mozilla, because um, that's just a stream and doesn't actually encourage any participation. Right. That might be something we want to look into. So. Yeah, so I think that when uh, I, that's an absolutely, uh, you know, it's a very good point, Chatter. I think that um, at one point we were like making a little bit more um, publicity for this meeting. Maybe we've stopped doing it. Uh, so this week, let's try to talk everyone into coming next week to this meeting, right? What, why don't we make a little contest out of this, Michael? Whoever mm -hmm. brings more contributors wins. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I think you'll win Nothing that helped. one. What? Was Michelle trying to ask a question? I don't know. I didn't understand what you said. Oh, I just said I think you'll win that one. That's all. <laughs> well, why don't we try it for next week? Yeah, no, that sounds awesome. Tyler, um, do you have any ideas of, you know, what we should change maybe for next week so that more people uh, come here and talk? I mean, we've had sometimes um, Alk, Yusef, uh, we have Andrew, Jay. I mean, we've had a couple of people here, so maybe we, we should uh, invite them again. Um, is there anything in particular you would like to talk about next week so that maybe we can make a theme meeting? <laughs> I do not have anything uh, concrete right now off the top of my head, but maybe this is something we could maybe uh, follow up in an asynchronous uh, contributor forum post or something like that. Perfect. Um, but yeah, I don't have anything off the top of my head right now. Cool, but let's try to get more people. That's a very good idea. Okay, I'll put an action, items, action item for us to open this up to see how we can get more people um, in this meeting. All right, cool. Um, so if we're done with that, let's move on. Uh, there is a question from Vito about the localized support forum for Slovenian. Where do we stand? Uh, I see there was a, a roadmap item. Uh, Kadir, do you know anything about that? There, there was. Uh... So the thing is that, uh, oh, maybe uh, Vito means gen in general, localized forums in general. So okay. what, what I can uh, say about that is that, yes, we have the ability to actually add new locales very easily. So if there is any community that does, uh, uh, that does want to have uh, support forums in their language and uh, that has a community to man those forums, we can uh, turn them on for, for uh, whatever language. Um, wants that. Uh, but the, the most important part is that we don't want to do this just, just um, uh, if, if there is no community because nothing is worse than having a forum where you have lots of questions but no answers. Uh, so in that case it's better to direct them to some other place instead of just creating uh, such a situation. Uh, so that's why it is very important to work with our community managers uh, to see if it makes sense to open up a, uh, a forum in your language. It's, it's um, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we have the technical side of it, but there is a community side to it that we also have to take care of. Hope that answers the question. Right, so uh, Vito, if you are interested in this, we can talk about it. Uh, we need to make sure that there will be enough people to actually be able to support the support forum. Um, but for this, we need to discuss more in detail on about what's going on in the Slovenian community. Um, so let's follow up the two of us, uh, and we'll see what we can do about it. I mean, if this is important for you, uh, and the community can do it, then we're super open to having a more localized forum. forums. That's not a problem. All right. Um, if there are no more questions on this one, let's move to the next one. Can response redesign? I see there is a thread here. Okay. 
Right, I see there was a discussion about uh, redesigning some can responses. But it's quite long. Um, okay, let me take so this one. I can. Yeah, yeah sorry, I mean, I, I had responded in that forum, uh, in that in that thread. Um, so it's unclear, unfortunately, what the question is here, because there is already a discussion, like we, we concluded the discussion, and the idea was uh, that we first wanted to use the current system as it is, um, and mm -hmm. even only if it doesn't work, then we can think of redesigning it, giving it a different UX. Um, so I'm not sure what the question is, if anything has changed in the meantime. Right, Andrew, it would be great if you could uh, follow up on this and let us know what is exactly that you're looking for, uh, or also f maybe follow up on the thread uh, itself. Uh, and then we can discuss there, because it seems that right now it is unclear what exactly does it need to happen. Yes, uh, so we wanted to use grouping in, uh, in, in, in that part first. I, I think that's what the community decided, essentially. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, then we can follow up on the thread himself, itself. Cool, okay, um, let's move on then. Mozilla Summit, where will you be? Everywhere. <laughs> so um, you have uh, the names there. Brussels will be Michael, Levi and David, Toronto, Patrick, Ralph, Matt, Tyler and Kadir, Santa Clara, Rosanna, myself, Michelle, Roland, and Cheng, apparently. Um, it would actually be cool uh, if contributors could also put in when they're going, so that uh, we know uh, who we can actually meet. So there will be um, um, sumo stuff everywhere. Uh, it would be cool to know also about sumo contributors, where are going to be, so we can meet and greet. All right, any questions about the summit? Anybody? Questions, comments? Um, if not, let's move on to desktop. Firefox desktop, what's going on? Yeah, so the big thing is Firefox 24 is released tomorrow. Uh, you can find release notes at the link there. We don't have any significant new features, so minor changes to the new scroll bar on Mac. Uh, we tend to seven it up and uh, some new developer features, uh, browser console. Um, but yeah, nothing dramatically different that we're looking at there. Um, so as always, I'll be posting a post in the contributor forum later today, uh, just with some of the areas that we want to get some feedback around. And uh, you can always ping me during release week or at any time with anything that comes up. Excellent. Thanks, Tyler. Any questions about Firefox Desktop or the release tomorrow? I guess there will be more once you something in the thread in the room. Okay. If no questions, let's move on to Firefox Android. And for Android, uh, Roland is at the Android Work Week in Toronto. Um, and Firefox 24 for Android releases tomorrow as well. Uh, some more features there, WebRTC. Uh, NFC tab sharing, so if you have NFC, NFC enabled phones, you can tap them together, share your tabs. Um, and Night Reader in reading mode has been en enabled, or improved actually. Um, it should work a lot better if you're reading it in the dark. Um, and then there's a whole bunch of miscellaneous stuff. Um, it looks like Roland also has uh, Firefox 25 research etherpad there. All right. Okay, this looks awesome. Right, any questions about Android? I'm trying to move a bit fast because I know there's a presentation coming. <laughs> <laughs> to make sure you have time for that. Okay, um, then if there are no questions, let's move on to OS. Uh, Hermine or Michelle, who wants to pick this up? Oh, hi, welcome back, Hermina. Uh, and I didn't have time to put an update into the Etherpad, so maybe Ralph, if you're online, you can put an update in there. Um, I just want to mention we did have a couple of updates for the US uh, ZTE, the US and UK ZTE phones got a system update on Friday, which um, most people are having problems getting installed, unfortunately. There's a bug filed for that. And then the um, 
GPL devices uh, in Latin America got a firmware update, and I think that this resolves the uh, SMS issue uh, that we found, and um, it, it looks like it's problematic the first try when you try to install it, but then on subsequent tries, uh, people are able to install it. I don't have a bug on file for this one yet. Um, maybe Ralph can get a bug on file for that. Otherwise, we're working on 1.1 um, documentation updates. Uh, we'll have the help article day on Thursday to finish that up, and I will try to get another 10 um, articles ready for LTNN today, because I didn't do that on Friday. I meant to, and I, I forgot. Any questions? Okay, thank you. Right. Thanks, Michelle. Uh, we'll skip Thunderbird then, because Roland isn't here. So let's move on to metrics. Good year. What's new in yeah. metrics? All right. So let me give, give you a very quick rundown of what we're working on currently. Uh, in the in the metrics uh, department, like if you look at the KPI dashboard, one thing that I mentioned last week was about the Army of Awesome. Like we saw uh, quite a big uh, downturn there. Uh, but as I mentioned, it was seasonal, and as we can see today, it's actually um, uh, leveled off. Leveled so that's pretty that's cool, cool to see. Um, the one thing Thank that's you, uh, concerning is uh, that the sorry, I can hear myself. If there's anyone without a headset, could you please mute yourself? Or Berlin, do or your Berlin, thing. do your plug unplug <laughs> thing. <laughs> Uh, perfect. All right. Wait. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, yeah, so there, there was one concerning thing. It's the uh, helpful votes in our forums. Uh, maybe other people have seen this too. Uh, let me share with you very quickly uh, what we can see so far. Uh, just a moment, please. I see I have too many windows open, so I can't find the right window <laughs> to share. Oh, there it is. So I hope you can see my window, like uh, the chart. Could you, this is for the knowledge base, not the forums, right? Yes, did I say forums? Yeah. I'm very sorry. Yes, I mean, uh, I mean the KB. Uh, so in the KB, uh, we, we are seeing concerning uh, trend. Uh, as you can see from, from this graph right here, um, we, we had a huge uh, uptake uh, last year when we pushed the new IA, and then we had another uptake there um, when we were linked to by Firefox, uh, by Facebook, um, we pointed to, um, like, with the, with the, with the banner to one of our articles, which got a lot of votes and very helpful votes. Uh, since then, uh, the effect of that has leveled off, uh, but, all, but the trend is still uh, negative. So we're tr trying to find out why that is. Um, so we have looked into uh, quite a bit of uh, things, um, like localization, the effect of the top 10, but we are continuing to look, uh, we're looking into it still and don't have a conclusion yet. Um, so if you have any ideas where this might come from, let me know. But other than that, I just wanted to let you know that we are looking into this. So this is not something that flies under the radar. This is something that we are actually actively monitoring at this point. Uh, and hopefully we will have more information uh, about this next week or later. But we are looking into it. Yeah, and any help is greatly appreciated. Cool. All right. Any questions about metrics or the helpful goals? All right. If no more questions, we can move on to knowledge base. Michael. Um, 
ditto what Kadir just said. Uh, also uh, working on Firefox 25 articles this week. <laughs> that was very fast. <laughs> That's it. Did everybody get that? Wake up. Good morning. Hello. Hello. <laughs> okay. So this is what happen is happening in the knowledge space. So then we'll just move on to L10N. Hello, everyone. Here in L10N land, everything's good so far. Um, French and German, our top locals are picking up. Thanks, everyone. We have some new contributors and some faithful old contributors that are doing a great job. So thanks a lot for keeping that. Um, other local locals are very good. Um, we have some news. I think that we will be expecting new uh, locales to be launching Firefox OS. Um, I don't have the list exactly right now, but I will be contacting the um, localizers uh, soon. So, uh, you know, stay tuned. I might, you know, I might be contacting you uh, in a bit. Um, another thing, we are going to organize a German Elton and meetup in Berlin. Kadir and I will be hosting probably in this room. Um, a small gathering. Uh, we're gonna try to find people who are who want to help us uh, translate the articles. We'll get some pizza and you know spend here a couple of hours trying to you know get people uh, through our uh, tools. The idea behind that is also that we try this, we see what works, what doesn't work, and then we have a template for uh, similar Elton and sprints that you know our buddies with their uh, Mozilla reps friends can do by themselves. So. Stay tuned, and if you have any questions or if you know someone, let us know. That's it. That's it. Yay, Elton N and yay, Germany. Um, any questions for Rosanna in the Elton N world? All right, then we can move on to the sport forum. Uh, we had a sumo day last week. <coughs> uh, yay. Uh, where we had 98% of questions replied in 24 hours on the English forum, because now we can make a difference, and 100% on the Portuguese, sorry, Brazilian forum. So well done, everybody. Thanks for participating. Uh, this is great. And I'll move on to the questions presentations. So Kadir and I worked on um, making a, a small report, which is not so small, um, about how can we improve the solve rate on the on the forum um, and I'll actually let Kadir start because that will take a while um, so Kadir you want to take this on and sure thing go for all right uh, so let me give you a little bit of uh, background for this at the beginning of this quarter we said we wanted to improve the uh, forum uh, solve rate to 30 percent of course, to do that, you need to know what's actually going on in the forum. And we didn't have any idea. Like, why was the um, solved rate at 30%? Why wasn't it at 100% if our reply rate is at almost 100%? Um, so before we uh, implemented any solutions, any quick solutions, uh, without actually knowing what, what's going on, we wanted to have a report on it. We wanted to look into what's going on. Uh, to do that, we uh, selected a sample of the forum threads um, and we took one where we didn't actually change the forum um, during the time span. And it turns out there was uh, June 25 to July 9. We took all the threads in, that, in those two weeks, about 1,400 questions, and we analyzed them. So um, we looked at a number of different dimensions. Uh, I can, I can uh, um, mention the one for... for uh, so we, we broke this into two parts. In one part, we looked into... Uh, how did the way that the question was asked uh, influence whether it was marked as solved? Um, and how did, uh, how did we handle it? Like, uh, was there a difference in how we handled it uh, once the question was asked that made a difference to whether it got solved or not? Um, so Rosanna, can, uh, Madlena can quickly tell you the um, dimensions for uh, the, the uh, question uh, part the part of the ask a question flow and what made a difference and then I can talk to you about uh, what we found out about the uh, forum itself and in the end we can talk, tell you about our recommendations for what we should be doing now that we have these uh, insights so Marlena, up to you 
All right, so some of the criteria that I looked into when, when looking into the action ask a question flow uh, was the first one was to checking the about support. Um, you know that when you ask a question, uh, you have that option to, to add like some information that will go into about support. So the goal there was to verify if there was any connection between the number of users who provide that info and the solve rate. Um, so that was one. Another one um, was to check if the user is actually aware if he was talking on the forum. Um, so apparently some users are aware that they are going to post on a public forum and some aren't. So we were, I was trying to find like a connection between that and the, again the, the sold rate. Um, another Another criteria for this was to check the, the clear description of the issue. So again, I was trying to check if there was a correlation between the way the, the issue was described and written and then the salt rate. And in here, I took into consideration things like grammar and spelling, um, tone, if the user was like super friendly, did that manage to get him like uh, his threat solved? If he gave uh, enough info about like the software and the application he was using, applications he was using, did he um, provide any troubleshooting steps whatsoever? Um, and then the last thing that I checked was user savviness. So how savvy did the user appear to be, and if there was a correlation between that and again the the software. Uh, so this is what I checked, and I'll let Kadir tell you what he checked. Uh, on the form is itself. All right. So um, once the question is asked, of course, there, um, it, it's in the forum and now it's our, um, uh, it's our responsibility. So we have to deal with that. And I looked into a number of different dimensions that you can all see from the report that's linked in the etherpad. Um, let, let's go down, let's go through them one by one uh, very quickly. So the first one that I looked into was the actual soft rate. Uh, so yes, uh, only about 30% of the threats are marked solved, but is that because people don't know how to use the forum? They forget to click the button uh, and actually most of them are solved. They're just not marked solved. I looked into that. Uh, then I looked into the reply rate uh, uh, within, within one hour, 12 hours, 24 hours, and after 24 hours. Um, like is there, uh, was there, um, some kind of um, correlation between how early we give a reply and uh, how often those ended up being marked as uh, solved. Uh, could be, right? You, the earlier you reply, the more, um, the, the higher the chance of the threat being marked as solved. So I looked into that, then I looked into how many of those were actually looking for more information from the user. Like in how many cases were the user actually the person who didn't come back to give us more information? And then uh, ball dropped, uh, like there are, uh, I wanted to know like what is the situation with cases where we dropped the ball. So the user came back to us, told us that this didn't work, but we actually, we didn't follow up, we just let it sit. Uh, what's, what's the rate there? Um, and then of course there are uh, threats where we just don't know a solution. We, we did all we could and well, we couldn't find the issue. Uh, so what's the rate of those? Um, and finally, uh, the last one was the off topic. So how many of the threads that are in the forum are actually not supposed to be in the forum? Uh, they're just there because uh, people, people thought they would belong in our forum, but actually they don't, and we don't have a chance of even answering them. So what's the, what's the rate there? Um, so the, the, those are the states of the, of the threads, but also I looked into um, how many of our solutions did we provide within uh, the first 24 hours? Like how likely is it that a threat will get answered after that? Um, and the reply rate of the owner, like in how many cases do people actually come back uh, to give us more feedback? Um, so those were the dimensions that I looked at. Uh, so next, uh, Madalena can uh, tell you about her findings, and then I'll tell you about my findings uh, for the forum part. Okay, so going back to the criteria with the first one with the about support, uh, it seems that only 20% of our user users actually give this 
uh, give this info. Um, and there isn't a big difference between, I mean, when it comes to the people who actually give this info, there isn't a big difference between the people who get their questions solved and the, the people who don't get their questions solved. So it's more or less the same thing. Um, so it doesn't seem to make a difference whether this is provided or not. However, um, it seems to make a difference when, when we're talking about s certain topics such as crashes. So it seems that 60% of users who have questions related to crashes and actually give this info, then they get their questions solved. Um, so this is interesting because uh, this is something that we can actually action and we can think about maybe this sort of info is useful only for certain problems or certain topics um, and we can try to, to use that only then. Um, then going to the, the part where we were asking ourselves if the user was aware he was talking on a forum. It's a 50-50, so it's approximately 50% of the people are actually aware that this is a forum. So that leaves us with the other half who think that they are sending the, their question to some kind of email or support center or something like that. Um, so the solve rate on the users who know that, uh, who are not aware that they're on the forum is very low, it's around 15%. Um, while the solve rate on the users who know that they are on the forum is much higher is 40%. Uh, so again, we, we need to think maybe we can we can work on this and make it clear for users that they're about to, to ask a question on the forum um, and try to make them understand the forum dynamics, how does actually a forum work um, in order to, send, to set the right expectations. Um, going for, further to a clear description <coughs> of the issue, um, as I said, I, there were several things I was checking, like grammar, spelling, tone, uh, info about software, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, most of them seems that they don't make any difference. So in terms of grammar, like 90% of the threads are have good grammar. 90% of the users are actually quite friendly. Um, so it's not a problem there. 80% um, of the users actually specify, so are pretty clear about the application that they're using, software that they're having problems with, um, and so on. Uh, one interesting thing is that 80% of the users do not try any troubleshooting unless they're asked to. Uh, so they are not really willing or they do not know how to do any troubleshooting unless contributors come and say, have you tried this and that? Uh, so this is something uh, interesting that we can think of. And then the user um, savviness, apparently only 13% of our users are actually savvy. So they actually know what they're talking about. Most of them are pretty new with computers or with software, they don't know how to do things. So again, this is something that we can, we can think of. Um, yeah, so Kadir, wanna take this over? Right, so Madlina talked to you about the findings uh, in, in the question part. Uh, how do they look like? Um, uh, from, or or how, how uh, people, people ask questions and, and how that affects their chance of getting an answer. And uh, let me now tell you about the findings um, in the, uh, on the other side, on the contributor side, so to say, like, uh, what do we do with those uh, threats once they do land in our forums? Um, so first thing, uh, let me share with you this graph here. Um, okay, I hope you guys can see that. Yes, no? Yes. Yes, okay, perfect. Um, so as you can see, I mean, I'm, I, I graphed the dimensions here that I actually looked at. Uh, the first thing that I had looked at was the actual uh, soft rate. And as, as you can see, while 30% are marked solved, another 20% are actually solved, but just not marked. So we are doing much better in the forums than, um, than what we can see from the KPI. Um, it means that at least we're helping those people. Unfortunately, it's, it means that we don't necessarily help other people who read those threads afterwards because they don't know that one of those uh, uh, answers was the solution 
and we don't highlight it. Uh, uh, so that's 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 not a good situation to be in. But at least we know um, that there are another twenty percent in the forum um, that that are marked solved that are not marked solved but are solved. Um, then you have uh, another twenty percent, twenty percent, uh, twenty-four percent, uh, where it's it's unclear. Um, so these people didn't come back, uh, or they didn't tell us whether uh, the so their problem was solved or not. Um, so we have no idea in what situation they are in. This is this is the most um, difficult one for us, because essentially we are in the dark. Uh, so we need to get those people people back into the forum to tell us if we solved that problem or if we didn't then let us know about it so we can try more things uh, but this is this is very concerning uh, because essentially this means that uh, uh, they dropped the ball on us like they didn't come back to us we have no idea what's going on uh, then so these, these these are the states where we essentially um, yeah in, in one case we know we marked it soft in the other case we um, oh, sorry in one case we know we solved it. In the other case, we don't know we solved it. And then there are the other states. 6% uh, need information. Like we know that we are waiting for the contrib for the user to come back to give us more, more information. They just didn't come back. Uh, someone asked them uh, to give us to give them more information before he could give a reply uh, to give an answer, a solving answer. But the user didn't come back, um, so we can't actually propose a solution because we don't have enough information. Uh, then uh, seven percent is where we dropped the ball. This is a little embarrassing for us. Uh, so that means that the user did come back, but we didn't follow up. Um, so this is totally something that we can work on. Then we have another uh, five percent of off-topic. So these are questions that shouldn't be in our forum. They might be web developer questions. They might be questions about uh, other products that are not related to Firefox. Um, or other, or Mozilla products. Uh, so these are questions that we should actually uh, deflect on the ask question flow before they even land in the forums. Um, for example, if it's a developer question, we should actually deflect it to a developer forum where they have a chance of getting an answer. Um, so that helps us, but it also helps the person who has the question because he will be disappointed uh, in our forums. We don't have the expertise for that. Um, then we have another 5% where we don't know the solution. Like we had a back and forth, but in the end, we didn't know um, what to do with it. Like there was no next step that we could offer them. And then another 3% of um, other, th those are locked threats, essentially. They're duplicates and stuff like that. And we are now discounting them from next week on. We're discounting them on our KPI dashboard. Because those are threats that should actually be, um, they just, they are duplicates or stuff that we don't want to reply to even. Um, so we are cleaning them out. Now, of course, these are the states of the threats, but uh, I also mentioned that we, that, that I looked into um, the, uh, the, the time delta between the, the uh, um, uh, question being asked and the first reply. So there's a surprising thing here. I wanted to show you like a graph or scatter graph or something, but the reality is that um, so you know I've closed this graph here. Uh, but the reality is that uh, when people uh, ask those questions, we answer them, and I mentioned this before. We we answer those uh, within twenty. Uh, sorry, I lost my uh, trail of thought. Um, so when people ask a question, uh, we reply to them within one hour in 96% uh, of the cases. So there is actually, like, after that, there are only 4% left, and uh, most of them, or, or a lot of them, are actually locked threads. Uh, so within, um, yeah, 96% have, um, have an answer. So within the first hour, so it doesn't make sense to go into more detail than that. So essentially, we can't talk about the correlation between a quick first reply and the solved rate because it's just that all of them get a very, very quick reply. Uh, so that's definitely not the cause um, for whether something was marked as solved or not. And the other thing that I looked into was, um, 
So from the, from the replies that we give them, maybe we, are, maybe we are quick, but maybe the replies that we give them are just not good. Uh, so, so how helpful is that? Uh, like you give a reply within the first hour, but it doesn't, it's bullshit. So where does that lead us? Uh, that wouldn't be good either. So what's the correlation there? And it turns out that actually uh, from those uh, replies that were marked as solved, 80% of them were given within the first hour. So actually being fast doesn't mean that the quality goes down. Uh, we do keep up the quality uh, while giving those answers really fast and within the first hour. Uh, so that also um, has, um, of course, I mean, there is a flip side to, uh, flip side to this. So um, to, uh, the, the thing is that almost all of the action in the forum happens within the first hour. Uh, so the first answer by a contributor in 96% of the cases happens in the first hour. The first reply by a user, 70% of them reply within the first hour. Um, then the solving reply, like I said, it's 80% um, uh, of the cases it's in the first hour. Um, and and after, uh, the, after the first hour, the, re the, the solve rate actually drops quite a bit. Um, so after the first, so within the first hour, you have a 30% solved rate, uh, and after that, you have a 6% solved rate. Uh, so if you don't get your uh, questions, uh, get question answered within the first hour, it's highly unlikely that you will get it answered after that. On top of that, um, the cases where the user comes back, uh, so 70% of them, when they do come back, they come back within the first hour. Only 30% of them come back after the first hour. And if they don't come back, their chances of actually, uh, of the threat getting solved, uh, drop significantly. So all of this, it points toward this one reality that our forum, like, a lot of it is happening within the first hour. That's the most important time frame for us. So now we have, uh, now that we have the, the findings, um, we also have some recommendations. Uh, so, uh, Mavin, I don't know how you want to go about this. Do you want to uh, give your recommendations first? For the ask yeah, a question I'll just go, go quickly through them because we don't have much time left. Um, so, there are only a few recommendations for the uh, ask a question flow. The first one is to try to make it clear to the user he's about to ask a question on the forum and link to some guidelines. Uh, so in this way, he can understand how the forum works and the fact that he needs to follow up on his threads um, and that the forum is actually a conversation and not just a, an email uh, that he, he writes to. Uh, so that's one thing that we can do. Um, another thing would be um, to try to customize the information that we're asking from the user depending on the topic he's choosing. For example, um, if he has an issue related to crashes and he chooses the topic accordingly, then we can ask for the about support um, information um, because that we know that that will help him and el eliminate that from other topics where the user doesn't need them, like bookmarks or something like that. Um, and also, this is not really uh, ask a question so related, but we can think about that to try to improve the quality of answers by making sure that the answers we provide are actually matching the level of savviness of the user. So uh, try to kind of guess what type of user are, are we dealing with. And if it's not such a savvy user, then trying to be like super <laughs> descriptive and not to not extremely technical because that might just uh, scare them away. Um, yeah, so these are like quickly my recommendations. Uh, could you do want to go quickly through yours? Yeah, sure thing. But I say I see that Michael has a question. Maybe. Um, oh. Yeah, just a, a let's see a quick question about the the thing about the crashes. Did you did you look into like you said sixty percent of the people uh, with crashes who also submit about support info get their crashes solved. Um, but I'm also wondering what the correlation 
of getting your crash solved and having submitted crash report IDs, which isn't in the about support uh, copy and paste thing, because actually that seems more likely to solve your crash than the about support information, unless you happen to have a known add-on that causes a crash, but that's not super common. Um, so for instance, it may make more sense to have some way to automatically get uh, crash reports than about support information. Um, mm -hmm. Was That's one theory, that's my thinking as I'm listening to this. Um, yeah, I think I think it totally makes sense, and I think that what we can do is to actually think about information that we need that might help, depending on what topic uh, the question is related to. So that that might be one of them. Maybe we need to to ask uh, to have like that crash report right there. Um, I'm, the whole point of this is that uh, we need to find a way to kind of customize what we're asking before in order to make sure that we have the information that we need beforehand and not uh, ask afterwards, did you do this or have you tried this uh, and so on and so forth. So I, I guess this is like the, the main takeaway from this. Yeah, absolutely. I actually, uh, uh, Madalena mentioned this, but yes, uh, we, we don't want to ask uh, everybody uh, to give us the crash ID. We only want to ask that to certain people who indicate that they have a problem stability. So that's not happening today. We give everybody the, almost essentially the same flow. So it's important that we change that, that we ask the right questions. And uh, as Marlena said, there is a technical side to this. Uh, like you want to do the technical changes, but you also want to change behavior um, ed and educate maybe how people are acting in the forums. And one of the things, so getting to my recommendations now, um, or, or sorry, I'm saying my recommendation, but this is our report. So this is uh, the recommendations for once the forum, uh, once the question has landed in the forum, how to handle them at that point. And one thing to do is that um, we should mark things as solved when they are solved. Uh, so we should be more systematic about that. Even if people, uh, if, if the user uh, missed it, we should go in there and we should mark the thing as solved. Especially when they tell us, actually this solved my problem, but they forgot to click it. So we should do it for them. Because there are millions of people who actually read those threads afterwards, afterwards, and for them, this is a huge service. When they know that something solved an issue, and they see it right below the question, this is this is an extreme. Uh, this is very helpful for them. We are not necessarily doing it for the for the user who asked the question, who shouldn't care, but we are doing it for those who come in afterwards and read those uh, discussions. So another thing that we should be doing is uh, we should make it easier for users to mark their question as solved. Right now, and this goes uh, hand in hand with the next one, right now um, it might not necessarily be obvious to them, like when they come to the forum, it's not necessarily obvious to them that they have to click the button. Um, and also they are not logged in. So when they come to the forum, they might not even see uh, a way to mark something as solved because they are not logged in. Um, so luckily, Persona will take care of this for us uh, in a lot of cases. People will already be logged into the forums. So hopefully uh, this, this will be made easier already very soon. Um, then, in, in emails, we yeah we want to uh, use stronger wording to get more feedback. Actually, this is something that we already implemented. Um, so we are asking people to come back to us now. We didn't do that before if this question didn't solve the problem. Um, then, uh, what we also want to do is uh, manual follow-ups. Uh, so we want to make it easier for people in the forums uh, to to see which cases need need their um, uh, involvement. Like we want to reduce the cases where we drop the ball, and the way to do that is to make it more obvious to contributors um, which cases still need their involvement, which cases need their attention. Right now, that is not obvious at all. Um, it's not clear which cases need attention. Um, yes. Sorry, um, it, the meeting time is actually over, and we have a ton of contributors that are nominated as contributors of the week. So, can you wrap up quickly? All right. Sorry. Um, yeah. So the last one, I, last thing I wanted to mention is that we uh, that they'll be more aware of what's going on in our forum by uh, using tags more specifically for uh, the states that the threats are in. They shouldn't just 
to be open or closed. There are a number of states that they're in, as we can see, and it's important for us to know in which state they are so that we can react to that appropriately. Uh, that's the last recommendation. If you have more questions, you can ask uh, Madlena uh, or me, and uh, we can try to answer that. Uh, other than that, we will probably go forward with this. Um, yeah. All right, thanks, Kadir. Sorry for cutting this short. Um, guys, if you have any questions, just check out the report uh, and let us know. Uh, we'll just move quickly to the contributors of the week because, because we have a lot of them. Hmm. Um, so I'll start by saying Ideato Philip Jaysher, uh, Fear56, nominated by Noah for their great job on the forums. And then Philip also nominated um, Waka Flocka Flame <laughs> and John99 also for their great work. So thanks, guys. Um, this is great. I'm so happy to see so many people here that work on the forums that are nominated. Um, so great stuff. Uh, the next one, did you nominate it? Did you nominate Yalam? Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know who not nominated uh, Yalam, but it seems to be that he, he helped with the Air Mozilla. Michelle, you know about that? Yes, mm. he did. We, we were supposed to have Air Mozilla, but they were down, and so he uploaded the um, the video. To oh, cool. Us, so, yeah. Thanks, Yusuf. Great job. Right. So, well done, Yalam. And then there's Noah nominated uh, for sending out a very comprehensive report on spamming the forum. Who nominated him? Was it you, Kadir? Yeah. Uh, no, sorry. I, I know I'm, I nominated Noah. All right. Thanks for doing that. So, yay, Noah. Once again, you were nominated also last week. Um, then we have, I guess this was Ralph, who nominated some people from the Brazilian community. Ralph, do you want to tell us? Yes, uh, uh, sure. Uh, so, uh, Zilmar and Austin, for, uh, they did a whole bunch of translation of articles last week. Uh, and also uh, FC Zuardi and Rodrigo Siefte, uh, they, they were answering a lot of uh, uh, a lot of uh, questions in the forums. Uh, so thank you, uh, thanks to four of you for for the awesome contributions last week. Right, thank you guys, and thanks Ralph for the nominations. Um, then going on, uh, <coughs> I want to invite everybody to check check this super cool video, popcorn video that Jay did. Um, listing the top 10 sumo contributors, I think they were from the forum. Uh, so check that out, it's really, really cool. Uh, and for this, Jay, you also get a nomination for Top Contributor of the Week from Rosanna. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Jay. I, uh, and just to tell everyone, if you have this type of initiatives, we're super happy to see that this comes from someone from the community. So thanks a lot for, for, for doing that, Jay. Um, We'll need to figure out how to how to get the list for um, Elton N so that we can do that too. Um, but this is great. Thank you. Yeah. So check out that video once again. Do not leave this meeting without checking. Um, I guess we're done. Unicor show show and tell. Ibai was supposed to do it. Yeah, but uh, we're we're a little bit over time today. Maybe next week we can resume yeah. the 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 forum uh, discussion, Kadir and Madlina, because I think you both were cut a little bit. Yeah, we can we can do that uh, next week as well at the Unicorn because we're already five minutes over time. So thanks everybody for actually staying <laughs> with us. Uh, we have a decision uh, of an action item for uh, next week to figure out ways to get more people involved in this meeting. And with that being said, Michael, you want to say something? Yes. We need a different unicorn for next week. Ebay did his uh, last time. Okay. Who wants then to go? <laughs> I see Michelle. Did you do it, Michelle? Yes. Don't you remember my rock and roll headband? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. right, right, right. Unforgettable. There. No. <laughs> then Hermina can do it. Uh, okay. That sounds good. That's <laughs> it. There we go. All right. Um, okay. Well, then let's just cut this because uh, we're late. So thanks everybody for the great meeting. Thanks for listening to our crazy report. Thanks for nominating so many people. See you on the forums and everywhere else in the small community. And don't forget next week, the game is on. The one who brings more contributors to the contributor meeting wins. Yep. Contributors are also in this game. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Michael. 
I'm gonna beat you. Game on. I'm... Game on. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. All right. Thanks, Melody. Okay, thanks, everybody. Have a great week. Bye. Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye.